Hey everyone, this is Dr. Greg Rose. We're here in the diagnostic bay here at TPI. And I wanna talk about the tennis serve. We talk a lot about the tennis serve and the racket fit certification seminars. And for a long time, we've been capturing motion capture on some of the best tennis players in the world here at TPI at the Talos facility. And I wanna show you a couple things that we've learned in the biomechanics lab that is really, really important. We talk a lot about sequencing when we talk about rotary athletes. We talk about the kinematic sequence in golf and there's nothing different about this in the serve. Sequence is so critical for delivering power. And I wanna show you a really, really cool, simple thing that really highlights the differences between really powerful serves and maybe ones that we can develop some more power. So on the, on the screen here, you can see we have two, two uh, tennis players. And I wanna talk about the one on the left first. So the one on the left, they're both in what's called the trophy position, the trophy pose. That's literally after the toss, they've got their, uh, the balls up in the air and they're about to go jump up and to go and hit, try and hit the ball. And what I want you to see is, if I take the player here on the left, okay, if I look at where, and by the way, we're using a club, a stick, to represent the tennis racket, but I really want you to take a look at the lower body and the racket. And I want to look at the relationship between the two. We talk a lot about the sequencing of, like, what should start the motion. In most rotary sports, in all rotary sports, really, the energy starts from the ground. So literally, if you're looking at a tennis serve, you want the energy to start in the ground, travel up the player's body, up to the racket, and then to the ball in that order. You would never want to start with the racket and then all of a sudden use your lower body, you'd be totally out of sequence. And literally what we look at is a really key position here from the trophy position to the jump. You look at the lower body. Now if you look at the lower body, and I'm gonna back this up just a little bit, take this forward just so you can get an idea where we're at. I back this up, I take this forward. I always look to see where the lower body starts to go vertical. Right there, the lower body started to go vertical. And I'm gonna back this up just a little bit. So literally, most players are gonna load, load into the trophy position, and then there's gonna be a point where the lower body starts to go vertical. When the lower body starts to go vertical, it's kinda like starting the downswing in the golf swing, right? When the lower body starts to go vertical, which on this player is right about there, the lower body starts to go vertical. I take a look at the racket. Now normally, the racket has not started to drop. Now you hear a lot of players talk about get the racket behind your back, scratch your back. I think that's potentially some really bad advice when a coach says that. Literally what happens is it's a reaction to this sequencing is what makes the racket drop. So in other words, when the lower body starts to thrust or drive forward, the energy starts here, there's this loading or this reaction where the racket drops down behind the player. It's kind of like a baseball pitcher when they start to unwind, the arm loads back. That loading back is so critical for power and for sequencing and timing. And you'll notice that the racket is above the player's head as the lower body starts to go vertical. Now, as I start to advance this, as he goes vertical, then the racket drops behind their back. But there was a sequence. Lower body went first, then the racket dropped. Let's take a look at the player on the right here. So if I take a look at the player on the right, let's just make sure we're in the same position here. Okay, so this player, if you notice, I'm gonna take them back to where the racket starts, or where the lower body starts to go vertical. Right there, the, ra the lower body starts to go vertical. Now, if you notice, if I take my player on the left back to where their lower body started to go vertical, which was right there, look at the difference. The racket is already well below the player on the right. So in other words, the player on the right takes the racket, puts the racket behind their back, and then they start to jump. The racket dropping is not a function or a reaction of the lower body. It's literally, this is an upper body swing. This is a certain person who's just using their upper body and going, so there's not, there's the sequence is out of order, right? Anytime the sequence of energy is out of order, we're not gonna create as much speed. Now there are two physical parameters that I think are critically important to do this properly. We call this early racket drop, by the way, one of the 13 serve characteristics that we teach at Racket Fit. To be able to not have early racket drop, there are two primary functions that need to happen. Number one is the lower body. Lower body's gotta work right. You have to load the lower body and then disassociate the lower body. Most rotary athletes can disassociate the lower body from the upper body. If the two go together, then that creates a problem. Number two is you've gotta be able to load the arm, right? Sometimes if you can't load the shoulder and you can't disassociate, players just take the racket down with their arms and it's more of an arm serve, not a lot of body reaction serve. And that's gonna cost you serious velocity. This is one of the most common characteristics we see in serving. It has so much to do with the body. We call this the body serve connection. The best way to determine if that is happening because of the body is to screen the body. And hopefully that gives you a little insight onto how to build a better, more powerful serve.
For more information on this, go check out our seminars at racketfit.com.